Hello again. So your brain doesn't exist disconnected from the rest of your body. It's deeply connected to the rest of your body. Um, your brain and its major connection to the rest of your body, we call the central nervous system. And the central nervous system is profoundly important. It's so important that uh, mother nature has encased our brain in a very thick skull. Some of us seem to have thicker skulls than others, but uh, the connection between our brain and the rest of the body, which we call the spinal cord, is encased in its own bony structure. Your spinal cord consists of the neurons, the axons, that connect your brain to the rest of your body so you can control your body. Uh, and that spinal cord is protected by its, the vertebra, the bony protection that covers the spinal cord. So you know that our body uh, understands how profoundly important the brain and the spinal cord are because it protects them so much with all these bones. So the central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord. And the spinal cord connects everything that's connected to your body, every, every part of your body to your brain. Um, once you get beyond the spinal cord, then you're talking about a nervous system known as the peripheral nervous system. And the peripheral nervous system connects um, your spinal cord, your, your central nervous system, with all your organs like your stomach and your limbs. It connects it to the muscles, um, to the touch receptors, uh, to your gut. If you've ever been so upset by something that you, uh, your gut acted up in one way or another, that's your peripheral nervous system. Now, the peripheral nervous system itself can be broken down into other nervous systems and we could spend an entire semester talking about the peripheral nervous system. But I'm just going to tell you about one part of the peripheral nervous system called the autonomic nervous system because it's really interesting for psychology. The autonomic nervous system has two parts in it. Um, I like to think of it as the warrior system. So you may have heard of the fight or flight response, or sometimes it's called the fight, flight, or freeze response. That's controlled by one aspect of the autonomic nervous system called the sympathetic nervous system. And the, sympathet the goal of the sympathetic nervous system is the following. If you are in a situation where you might die, literally, the um, sympathetic nervous system says, okay, I got it, I'm taking over here. This is your like emergency control center. It shuts down everything that you don't need and it focus all, focuses all of your cortical processing and energy on dealing with that situation that might kill you, whether it's uh, someone shooting at you or someone attacking you, or in the old days when we all lived in caves, maybe a tiger or a bear coming to get you. Um, so the sympathetic nervous system, which I think is a warrior nervous system, that is a system that says, okay, I'm dealing with this emergency. Now that system, the, para, the sympathetic nervous system works in tandem with the parasympathetic nervous system. And the parasympathetic nervous system is the peaceful system. I've, I've uh, included a picture of somebody meditating, that sort of relaxed meditative state when you're maybe hanging out with your best friend or just you know sitting outside on a beautiful summer day and you're just completely relaxed. That's your parasympathetic system. And your parasympathetic system is essentially everything that your sympathetic system turns off under an emergency conditions. So for example, um, uh, your immune system function, that gets um, strengthened when you're in the parasympathetic system. Your ability to digest food, that's all parasympathetic. In an ideal world, the goal is to keep the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous systems in balance. You don't want too much of one or too much of the other. Um, uh, some people think of the sympathetic nervous system as hitting the gas, and other people think of the parasympathetic, or, and also the parasympathetic system as, as hitting the brake. 
Each system is associated with its own set of activities, body activities. So when you're in the warrior system, the sympathetic system, what happens? Well, your pupils dilate, so you're really dialed in to whatever you're seeing. Your blood vessels contract, so the blood can race quickly to wherever you need it. Your heart speeds up, your breathing speeds up, you start sweating, you can't, um, you don't get enough saliva in your mouth because there's no need for you to digest food. So if you've ever like had to stand up in front of a big group of people and then just scared you deeply, probably your sympathetic system was kicking in. When somebody's in the parasympathetic system, you can tell their pupils contract instead of dilate. So there's no, when your eyes have dilated in the, parasymp in the sympathetic system, it's to get all of the light in that you can. You don't need that when you're in parasympathetic. Your um, blood vessels get larger because there's no need to quickly uh, move blood around. Your heart rate slows, your breathing slows, your sweat glands relax, your food can digest, your immune system gets stronger. Okay, so why am I telling you about parasympathetic and sympathetic systems? Have you heard of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder? PTSD, people who experience PTSD, are essentially stuck in an overactive sympathetic system. In other words, people with PTSD have a body or peripheral nervous system that sees itself as still under attack. So everything that happens when you are um, fearful for your very existence um, all of those processes that kick in, in folks that are experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder, those processes stay active even when the threat is gone. So even when they're in a situation where the world is calm and peaceful and everybody else without PTSD is, is in that peaceful parasympathetic system, uh, folks with PTSD have that, they're still stuck in the um, sympathetic or warrior system. Okay, that's all I'm going to tell you about the central and peripheral nervous systems, and this is the end of the lecture for Unit 4. So students in my 150 class, time to head back to Canvas and do the lab and get ready for the quiz. Thanks so much. Take care.